what are vectors? A vector is basically a direction. In Houdini, vectors are saved as three floats. Generally, in a lot of software and, and uh, mathematics, vectors are seen as directions. Could be in multiple dimensions. You could have a vector of two dimensions. But in Houdini and what we're doing right now, we have three dimensions. So imagine that I want to place this apple in a location in space. I would, I would need to know where is it in the horizontal axis, so on its x axis, on the horizontal one. Uh, the other one, so the, the Z one, and how high up is it in air? If I have those three values, I now know where this apple is located. So I can start moving around the apple. Now, what I, I don't just want to move this apple. I can imagine myself doing it, but imagine there's an earthquake or something, and there's also a rotational force uh, being put on this apple. I really want to lock it down into place. That's where I'm going to be using vectors for. So I want to spawn this apple in our game engine where a window would be, for example. So how would I do this? Well, imagine that I have this apple and now I want to stop it from rotating. So what I could do is basically pin down a pencil right through this apple. So we just stick a pencil inside of this apple. Very nice pencil over there. And you could think, all right, now this apple, is, it's a lot harder for this apple to rotate because you put a pencil inside of it, but it's not enough. Because right now, I could still rotate this pencil around this axis. So I could start basically rotating Apple. So it's already restricted, but not completely. So one vector is not enough to really limit the amount of uh, rotations this Apple can make. I don't really have all the control yet. So what I need to do at the right angle, put another pencil in this, uh, in this Apple. So I basically have two vectors, which are directions, placed inside of this Apple. And now I really have locked it down. The third one I don't really need anymore. Sometimes nice to have because you have like another uh, direction at a, at, at a 90 degrees from both of them. For example, uh, the same as we have those three positions. But two are already enough to really lock it down into place. So let's dive into Houdini and have a look at how this actually works and how this looks like when we're working with stuff in Houdini. Let's understand vectors in Houdini. First, I want to have a point, so we can have a point with a vector. So usually where we store our points, uh, our vectors is on points. So I want to place an add node. And what I want you to do is also dive into a geometry container, of course, because we are going to be working on the sub level. Now, what we have over here is nothing yet because this add node doesn't do anything and what i want to do is add one point and now you can see that we have one point floating around in our space which is nice because we need this point to do anything i'm going to place down an attribute let's do a wrangle for now point wrangle and in this point wrangle we will write down v for vector equals n which is a normal and is equal to zero zero one so we've created a vector we cannot really see it yet we can visualize it by displays uh, display normals so now we can see that we have made a vector and because our original point is basically at the, the origin the exact location of this vector is also the same as the direction because vectors are always uh, shown as if they are pointing from zero towards the direction so if i would right now be moving this point by placing a transform oh not a trail a transform you can see that the vector place is going to stay in place well it's going to have the same direction because that's how vectors are being used. Which with a position, of course, is different. Because a position will get different values if you move it. Even though this normal is not getting any different values, we can have a look at this, at this vector in the geometry spreadsheet. And we can see it is still 0, 0, 1. How I went there is basically a plus icon and 
then to an inspector, geometry spreadsheet. And if you want also your in your screen this to appear, you can press Alt and then right bracket to make another uh, to make your screen split. And let me remove this one again. Now, so this one is moving, and this is not the same, of course, if I would have an, if a point in this location. So let me set this up also as an example. So let's place down another ad. And this time I'm going to place a point in this location. So you can see over here that we have a normal, which is pointing towards the position 0, 0, 001. And over here I have a point in this lo that location. If I would be translating, transforming this point, now I actually need to translate the position values to make this happen. So if I would be moving this point with this transform, you can see that this point is also moving to the same place that the normal was moving. But now we have a channel which is being modified. So directions are kind of living in their own space in a way. Uh, they don't really change anymore, except when you're rotating, but let's not worry about it right now. And that's kind of how a vector works. So that's the basis of a vector. You don't need to know all of this, but it's nice to know but it's not completely necessary for what we will be doing. Let's delete those. And right now I also want to show you the other vector we're going to be using. And it's nice to be able to visualize that. So I want to have an up vector because with the, uh, the example of the apple, we know that we need two vectors to really pinpoint the location of that thing, which I will also be showing later why that is again. So let's, make sure that this one is pointing upwards and don't forget the equal sign and we don't see it right now because it's a different attribute than the normal but i do want to be able to visualize it so what i will do is press d in the viewport i will go to visualize and i've already done it over here but i will do it again i will press the plus sign i will make a marker and this marker i will give it a name which is up and a label which is up my name is now doubled up, so don't worry about the two which appeared behind it. And the actual attribute that I want to use is up. But I don't want to visualize it as text. I want to vec uh, visualize it as a vector, as a direction. And that should do it. So right now I have this up, which its label is the same. Let me also make the label up too, so I know that it's the second one. And let's look at this. And now you can see the second direction pointing upwards. So this is something you can now use to actually spawn and place objects. So let's imagine that I want to place a uh, rubber toy. And I want to place it on this point. So right now we have our rubber toy. Let's not visualize the normal because that's a little bit heavy for, uh, for this application. And I don't need those points in the point numbers. And what I'm going to be using is a copy to points. And this copy to points, I'm going to wire into our original point. And right now you will not really see anything change because um, this one is at the origin, looking forward and just completely straight. So until we start rotating our original uh, point, which I can do with a transform the transform recognizes the up and the normal and if i start rotating this by a little bit more than so little you can see that the two of these are starting to rotate and now you can see that my original rubber toy is also rotated the same way so this way i am uh, for if you have only one point and one object, you could also just have placed this transform for this object. But it is sometimes a little bit much and very difficult to do, especially if you don't really want to move this because this is an instance which cannot really be scaled or anything else. And you have a lot of them. Imagine that we have a scatter and we have a grid and we have a lot of points. And all of the, these points, if I would copy over the rubber toy, I 
Oh, I think I have pressed the wrong button. Oh, there we go. No, it's fine. Uh, and let's also lower this point for the sake of simplicity a little bit. So now I have a bunch of Robertos. And what you can see is that they're all pointing the same way. But what if I wanted to randomize this? So what I could do, let's place down a point VOP. Let's wire those points in there. And at this point, I want to basically make a randomized normal. So I'm going to use anti-aliased flow noise. Doesn't really matter which one you use. I'm going to wire in the position. And this right now will give a random float. And I want to get like a random direction, a random vector. Now, what I do with this is then normalize it. And having done this, I can now set a kind of random normal. And let's have a look. If we wire this into the copy the points, you can see that they're really random. But imagine that I actually didn't want to randomize them uh, that much. I wanted to only randomize them around their uh, horizontal axis. And to really have that control, I need that second vector. So what I could do is still have that original up vector being placed, which is right now already doing some changes because we have now a little bit more control of what's actually happening. But we don't have, uh, we, there's one thing that you have to think about when we're placing this, because we have now two vectors being placed on these, uh, these points. And what you can see right now is that the normal is dominant over our up vector which is right now not something that I, for this, the sake of this example, what I wanted. And one trick to fix this is to do a double cross product. The cross product is something that we, we will use later. I'll dive into later uh, exactly what it does, but right now I'll just show you a simple trick of a double co cross product. So what the cross product does, if I visualize this, is it basically takes the, there's always one other uh, vector which is perpendicular to, or at the right angle of both vectors that you put in. This is kind of a mathematical fact. So what you could, what you could think is that those two vectors are always, if you put your camera right on the same, uh, oh, that's the wrong button. Let me quickly refresh this screen. Oh, there we go. That's better. Uh, and let's visualize that up again. All right. So what you could say is that two vectors are always at one specific angle on the same plane. So there's always one plane which matches those two vectors. Well, if we take the normal of that, that basically the up vector, the direction of that plane, because a plane is always basically pointing towards something. If we look at this giant grid that we have, standard in Houdini, it's pointing upwards. Each plane is always kind of, there's one vector describing that plane. And that vector is what you get if you do a cross product. So if we do this and we wire this into the normal, you can see that over here it will be going sideways. If I actually use the normal and the up instead of the position and the thing. All right. So now you can see that uh, we've adjusted the normal and this is what happened. So let's flicker a little bit in between those. And you can see that we, for this, these two, we have a plane. And right now we're pointing exactly sideways. Well, that's pretty cool. But if you do this twice, so right now we have a, uh, a sort of a, uh, a, a cross product, but we can do this another time. And this time we use this side ones and we also use the up vector. The up vector that we have. So let me uh, actually grab the up because right now we've been using the normal. Oh, we, uh, I, I actually just did something wrong. Sorry, I used the, this, this, this example is uh, kind of by mistake working a sort of. Uh, I need to have the up vector. So let's take a few steps back. To do this crop uh, cross product product uh, productively, we need to have a up vector, 
and this up vector goes in there together with normal. And now you can see that we have the correct one normalized, yeah, because it needs to be horizontal. So uh, let's uh, flicker between the two of, the, two of these. So what you can see is that we have our uh, original normal, which is very, very blurry and very uh, distorted and going everywhere. And what we wanted to do is to have that horizontal lock on our object. So if we now wire in our uh, crust with the up and the, uh, the normal, we have it uh, set up in a way that uh, it's now horizontal, but it's still going sideways. So we do we need to do another cross because we basically need to cross off the two of these, which is the up and our adjusted normal. And if we wire this in, we now have our original uh, normal, but now it's not dominant uh, towards the up anymore. And what this means is if I copy this over, so I can also switch between the two of them, the old behavior and the new behavior. So this is going to be uh, the old behavior, which is just this noisy normal. And let's place a switch. And with this trick, you can see that we have switched the, the dominance, basically. And how that looks like is that right now, this is the one with dominant, uh, where the, the up vector is dominant. And this is the one where the normal is dominant. So the normal can be pointing downwards, which is very random, which is not maybe sometimes something you don't want. So this is basically a tool in your arsenal to uh, do some cool placement. And if we go to the one where we've set it so the up vector is dominant, now we have a, yeah, a bunch more control basically uh, over how our uh, object is We're looking and where it's pointing towards. So we have a direction and uh, set in there randomly, but still they're all straight on the ground, which is a more logical arrangement for these rubber toys. All right, so that has been quite some knowledge. Uh, and now we want to uh, use this a little bit more because what we want to think of is how we are going to remove that complexity from the buildings. How do we get something which is very simple? So that's what we will do in the next step.